Top 50 unicorns to watch. The metaverse is coming. What the f is the metaverse? And IPO alert, Procore, Discord, and Squarespace hit the market. Our mission is to bring together the best venture capitalists to compete so you have the insights on how to invest with the best. Now let's meet our venture capitalists jumping in the Thunderdome. David Goldberg, general partner, Alpaca VC, on his third fund of $75 million, self-proclaimed startup junkie from New York City, now in Miami with a permanent tan. Cheryl Campos, head of venture growth at crowdfunding platform Republic, that just raised $36 million. Also a partner at the Community Fund and a scout at Lightspeed Venture Partners. Matt Conwell, Rare Breed Ventures, known as your favorite VC's favorite VC, and owner of the best VC Twitter in the game, runs a $10 million fund investing in underrepresented founders. Jenny Friedman, Supernode Ventures, investing in early stage tech companies up to $200,000, and recently announced her new fund, Four Acres Capital. Four of our top investors are back in the prime time metaverse. Who's gonna take that belt? Let's go. Can we get some lightning? IPO alert powered by M1 Finance. Squarespace, Procord, Discord, and Krispy Kreme are all set to hit the public markets. Pick one upcoming IPO that you're most excited for and has the brightest future. Jenny, kick us off. Okay, I'm not just saying this because CEO Anthony Casalena is literally my new best friend from Miami, but Squarespace without a doubt. Anthony is an absolute boss and he still owns a third of the company. We've seen plenty of tech companies with strong public market debuts that were losing money hand over fist. Squarespace has been profitable for five years and revenue grew 28% last year. And most importantly, breaking news, I'm starting something new. It's called Four Acres Capital and Squarespace has been a life changer in setting up my new site. All right, strong promotion for Squarespace there, the e-commerce website building platform. Ticker is SQSP. We're gonna move over to David. Which IPO are you like? I like Procore. Uh, the construction space is absolutely massive with over $670 billion of GDP running through the space. They're now involved in almost every new development project and they've quietly been acquiring smaller players in the space which allows them to increase their share of wallet and ultimately their market size. All right. Any any of the IPOs that we picked of the four that you like, per, per se? Maybe Krispy Kreme? None of them. None of no. them. All right. So he's selling all those. Procore it is. All right. Cheryl, IPO? <laughs> also, though, I agree with space, Squarespace, but we can talk about that later. Um, I, as you know, voice is the future as we yearn for connection. I've been very sane because of the game nights that I have on Mondays and Fridays. So I would actually go with Discord, which is planning its IPO in 2021. Um, as you also saw during the pandemic, the MAU doubled basically to 140 million people. And so they actually raised 100 million la late last year at a valuation of 7 billion. Um, Microsoft, you know, was trying to acquire it, those talks went fell through so now they're looking to um, go into the public markets with a valuation of about 10 billion so I'm very very bullish as it stays relevant and expands past gaming okay taking discord Mac are you gonna pick one of the uh, four IPOs that we chose here so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and ride with my homegirl Jenny over here and I'm gonna also pick Squarespace because as an investor I got my start in the state of Maryland working at the Maryland Technology Development Corporation at Teco they are the largest fund of early stage tech companies in the state of Maryland and guess who Squarespace's first investor was? It was Tedco. And there was a couple young guys coming out of the University of Maryland starting a really cool company, make it easier for people to create websites. It was Squarespace. So as somebody who worked at the organization that was the first investor in Squarespace, going to ride for the home team. Okay. Have y'all ever used Squarespace? <laughs> yeah, I just that said. That learning curve. That, this, mm, that's why I have I a new know. business. I'm a developer, so you know, Squarespace makes my life easier. But I could also just, you know, free code it too, so. Mm, okay. CB Insights put together a list of 50 future unicorns, companies they eventually think will be valued at a billion dollars or more. Which of these companies stand out above the rest? Cheryl, which future unicorn do you like? So I'm a little biased. Uh, for Public Labs, we actually went into Relativity's realm. Um, and so a couple of things that I want to note is that it's one of actually of the few launch services companies that it has a medium-sized payload and has really large contracts. 
The second is that they actually have multiple launch sites in partnership with the U.S. government. So Cape Canaveral, as you know, is, is a really uh, coveted site. So they're uh, there as well as their, you know, 3D printed rockets, right? So they have way faster development than the competition, 10x, you know, the development time over SpaceX. And last but not least, they're backed by Tiger and Bond and all these top tier VCs. So um, to me, it's a clear, clear unicorn and something that I think will change uh, our lives. Strong team behind them. Mac, which future unicorn are you picking? Unfortunately, the one I want to pick is Main Street, which is one of the companies that's probably going to be one of the fastest companies in American history to 100 million in ARR, which isn't on the list. So if I'm going to go with the list, I'm going to pick Flutterwave. You know, financial product, uh, helping out the African markets, really bringing fintech into emerging markets. All of a sudden, you have this company uh, made by these amazing black entrepreneurs that now has all these VCs running to Africa to get into fintech. Flutterways changing the way VCs look at the world, let alone change the way fintech's done in uh, the country of Africa. Flutterwave it is. It looks like, Jenny, your pick was chosen by Mac. You got something else besides Flutterwave? I mean, what are you picking? I'm obsessed with Flutterwave. Like, am I going to get no points if I talk about it? I'm all about the African markets. I, I have an investment there, Mac. I don't know if you do, but it's... <laughs> Flutterwave is a world-class payments company. They have partnerships with Visa and Alipay, and they process over 150 million transactions over over $10, uh, $10 billion. And so many companies shuttered in 2020. Flutterwave's revenue grew more than 100%. A ton more about Flutterwave, but if you need to know another one, Capsule obviously is booming. They already hit a billion-dollar valuation, major tailwinds with COVID, high, and high-risk people staying home, all that. But Mac, you stole my answer. Yeah, big fan of Capsule, though. We, we, we just... We, we just get along, Jenny. You know? Y'all just colluding. Like, y'all just saying the same stuff. Like, y'all on the same team. Yeah, meanwhile, <laughs> different reasons. Meanwhile, David's sitting here with the belt. David, which uh, future unicorn you like? Yeah, so I think a few people pointed out that the list provided was a little bit stale. I think about a third of them are already billion dollar companies. But one of those that's always stood out to me as interesting is Goat, the sneaker marketplace. I think their last round valued them at $1.75 billion, and they hit on a couple of really interesting trends, including collectibles, resale, and streetwear, and also shows the power of community. I may or may not be an underground power user. Okay, a lot of New York companies as well. 70% of that list were in the US-based companies. 50% of the companies were enterprise big data and fintech sectors. We're excited to announce our partnership with M1 Finance in creating the primetime portfolio. We're taking the insights from our VCs to buy stocks using the M1 Finance Super app. We're inviting you to download the app, the link below to invest alongside us. All gains from these investments will be donated to the nonprofit Girls Who Code. Download the app and let's make some money for a good time. Hot Sectors, brought to you by First Republic Bank. ESG investing is on the rise, where environmental, social, and governance investing is a way to build a more ethical portfolio. What percentage of your portfolio should be impact-aligned investments? Matt? Yeah, for me, I don't know if you need to have a specific percentage of your portfolio you know, put towards impact, but understand that that is the wave, that is the future. Right. If you are going to be a prudent VC or investor, you want to look towards companies that are dealing with impact. So take a company like Thousandfell that makes recyclable sneakers, uh, unspun, changing the way manufacturing is done so that you can manufacture clothes to fit with no waste. Or a company like Rebundle, plant-based biodegradable braiding hair. I love those women out of St. Louis. Heard about Rebundle. You talk, yeah, I've heard about Rebundle. David, uh ESG investing. Yeah, so maybe this is controversial, but I don't believe a portion of the fund should be earmarked to be impact driven, right? We're fiduciaries and we have shareholders who look to us for financial returns. That being said, we do believe strongly in the correlation between purpose and profits. For example, one of our portfolio companies is Imperfect Foods, which is an e-grocer with a very strong sustainability angle, which aids their value proposition, ultimately leading to more profits. Like the controversy there. Cheryl, uh, ESG Investing, your thoughts on yeah, this? Yeah, also don't agree that there should be a percentage. Uh, I actually, we see the rise uh, in Republic with about... Uh, say 40% of our companies really focus on ESG, climate sustainability. Younger investors in particular are have shown an interest in like putting money where their values are. Um, and our slogan now is profit to the people, right? Um, and so something there that I want to mention too is, you know, VCs in the past have been burnt um, 
but you know a decade ago by this whole rush to invest in this sector and then they weren't getting the re returns that they wanted so really what republic and just everyone in general should notice is that you can't invest by doing good so there's really no percentage that you should have okay jenny do you agree with this finally i'm contrarian so funds with esg strategies account for more than a third of capital under management in the u.s and i say why not 100 ESG investing doesn't mean that you have to choose between maximizing profitability and building an ethically conscious portfolio. Consumers speak with their wallets, and social media has allowed the public to mobilize pseudo boycotts against companies that don't reflect their social values. We are in the business of making money and doing good. So shout out to our portfolio companies, New Age Meats and Buy Humankind for continuing to crush. Okay. I feel like Jenny was reading off of a script there. <laughs> I know what you mean. I felt like that too. <laughs> I've had bullets and I was like, wow, you really are. Points for stats and facts though. So she gave out some good stats and facts. The presentation, you know. You like, gotta do the homework, you know? Like. <laughs> I, I got my notes right here. ESG funds captured $51 billion. Uh, net new money in the last year. So that's something to be noted. Also Recycled Track Systems is a company I like to shout out. A better waste company, which is on-demand waste services. Doing big things out in New York. Wilder World raises $3 million for a metaverse built around NFTs. Money continues to pour into the NFT market, avatars, holograms, and crypto. The rise of the metaverse is here. What does the metaverse mean to you and what technologies will drive its growth? David, talk about the metaverse. So to me, the metaverse is a virtual world where people can interact with one another as well as with different aspects of the world itself. Some real examples are Decentraland and Sandlot, or Sandbox, but think of The Matrix or The Oasis from Ready Player One. I'm pretty bullish on the concept from a couple of levels, including owning virtual real estate. To me, the technologies that will drive its growth and ultimately make it mainstream are those that allow all the different platforms to be connected and ported into one world versus siloed individual worlds. For examples, Bring your avatars from Genies or other platforms, your digital art from Super Rare, your virtual racehorses from Zed, and bring it all into a single virtual world. So the technology may actually wind up looking something like an API. All right, virtual horse racing, big thing down there as well. Jenny, your thoughts on the metaverse? So to, the, to me, the metaverse means we're gonna become even more divorced from physical reality. So I'd say there are two areas where improvements will become even more important over time. The first is infrastructure. So building fully interactive 3D metaverses requires massive digital files. AR is gonna to continue to push the limits of what 5G can currently facilitate. And second is compatibility. I think activity will increase if we have the tech that allows you to move seamlessly between the digital and the physical universes or the different digital universes. Keep an eye out from Microsoft Mesh, Mesh which is mixed reality software using HoloLens smart glasses, I think, I think essentially what you're talking about there. Mac, are you in the metaverse? Give us some insights on the metaverse. The metaverse is, is it's, a, it's a trend that's going to happen, right? We have saw what happened with Second Life. That was a, a popular, like, kind of early stage, what metaverse is. Think about the Sims coming to life, but being more photogenically accurate. But I think one of the key things about the metaverse is we're also going to introduce new asset classes for people to purchase into. So think about within the metaverse, yes, you're going to have people, you're going to have avatars, you're going to have animals, you're also going to have products. So think Gucci. Gucci now has the ability to create a Gucci bag that's just a digital file that they can reprint over and over and generate massive cash from. So think about all those great sneakers that David wants. He can now go get the digital version of them, right? And no longer has to wait in line. So the, 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 the coming of new assets within this digital market, I think is going to be a big boom within the metaverse and fundraising and funding. I'm wearing a, a Gucci suit right now, can you tell? I can tell, it looks amazing. Jenny can put that on your avatar. You still have to wait in line for those digital goods, unfortunately. Thank you, Top Shot. Unless yeah. you know someone. Cheryl, give us the metaverse, your thoughts on the metaverse. Yeah, so the metaverse to me is also a virtual world where you can be a better, if not cooler version than yourself. Um, and I think the two asset classes that will really be uh, disrupted are real estate and consumer, as Mac mentioned. So in terms of real estate, uh, there are so many... Um, right now purchases going on around the central land right so land that sold there for five hundred dollars back in 2019 are now being sold for eight thousand dollars um the sandbox same sold about 2.8 million dollars worth of land and so these are real 
real world real estate prices, right? And so that's kind of something that we're seeing is going to be uh, a movement. So shout out to the Republic Realm Fund that we actually just launched so that we are able to buy more properties out in the central land. And at the same time in consumer, Domino's and other corporates are coming through and buying property and actually making functionality so that you can actually buy pizza in the virtual world and then get it to your real life world address, right? So there's actually going to be this connectivity between um, the virtual world and what you do there and then how it affects your real life. So I'm actually really excited to see how other corporates come and pour their money in so that, you know, other people can uh, learn about their products, be, uh, and then also purchase them in real life. So love to see all of that coming together. Absolutely. I'm trying to get on the grid, as in the Tron grid, you know, with Daft Punk and get into that party. You remember that? That was kind of, that's where it's hot. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a cooler version of yourself, but not still that, not that cool. So <laughs> just Impossible. saying. Nothing could be as cool. Uh, Jenny and David, you did a great job. You didn't make it to the finals today. We appreciate your time. Damn. It's, it's like that. Mr. Cool up there with his belt. Uh, you polish it up for next time. Uh, and Mac and Cheryl, congratulations. You made the finals. I'm going to ship this one over to Mac. Yay. I just want everybody to know, I'm on a losing streak. I've never been on the show and not made the finals, but I haven't been winning the finals lately. So Cheryl, just want you to know, I'm coming for it. I need this. I, you know what? I'm kind of cheering for you now. <laughs> I'm like... The Money Round, brought to you by First Republic Bank. The antitrust lawsuit between Apple and Epic Games is heating up. Buy or sell, Epic Games has a legitimate chance at winning this lawsuit against Apple. Cheryl, your thoughts uh, on this? I actually think they do. Right now, Apple's lawyers are kind of giving it up to them in the sense that uh, they're not doing a very good job of representing Apple as just uh, you know another player in the space. They're trying to... Uh, frame it so that Apple only has about 30% of the total uh, apps marketplace share globally. But this is a US <laughs> antitrust act and so therefore they do have a monopoly and at, even though they're trying to make the case that Epic Games has just been playing fast and loose and making sexy characters like a banana um, that they just <laughs> brought up yesterday, um, it's something that's pretty much seems like a weak straw man uh, argument and therefore I feel like Epic Games really does have a chance of you know fighting for more of the little guy even though they're not so little but fighting more for uh, folks to have uh, better rates and um, you know not be charged as much by a conglomerate like Apple. Mac your thoughts on this buy or sell Epic Games chance? I'm buying it you know I agree with Cheryl you know the the Apple's <laughs> legal team hasn't been doing the best job but at the end of the day what we've seen in the tech industry is that these companies have grown into massive monopolies that we haven't managed because it didn't look the same in the physical realm, right? It's not like seeing a car de owner, dealer, you know, owning every dealership in the country, right? Like you can see that, you can touch that. Apple owning the marketplace for all the apps is not something you see and touch. It's not something that's probably top of mind unless you're one of these business owners. But when you really stop and think about it, they take 30% of everything there. And everybody puts their apps on Apple. Sounds like a monopoly, y'all. There's only two places you go. Either Google Play Store or Apple. Eh, might be a chance to win that one. Let's, let's hope so. Hustle Fund aims to build an inclusive investor community through the launch of the Angel Squad. What are the most successful investing strategies the best angel investors implement? Mac, I'm gonna come back so, to you. So I love what Hustle Fund is doing. Uh, Backstage has done something similar. Uh, if you're part of the Republic community, Republic's like the go-to place for real angel investors. Had to give a shout out there, Cheryl. Um, but when you think about from an angel investor's perspective, the best strategy is you get to be super early. You get to be in, in the ground level, right? Like you get to be there when they're just getting started. Is it really hard to select companies that early? Yeah, it is. But your ability to get to companies and get in front of them before the VCs and before the Sharks and everybody else, before me, David, and Jenny, um, is really the best strategy you have. So Hustle Fund and these other platforms are giving people the opportunity to see those companies at the earliest stages to really get in on the ground floor and get a chance to be helpful too. Cheryl, 
strategies and best angel investors. Absolutely. So uh, thankfully, I have the honor of leading the angel investing masterclass that Republic has. And so I was able to interview a ton of angel investors. And some of the common themes are founder first, right? Making sure that no matter the idea or what is it, it's execution and can the founder do it. Uh, second of all, it's being helpful. So similar to what Max said, uh, by adding value, that founder then has a good um, opinion of what you can do and it will actually refer you more deals. And so actually VCs in general uh, count most of their deal flow to just, you know, uh, founders in general. So the more you can add value, that would be great. And then last but not least is relatively looking at your own experience and seeing, okay, can I um, take all of my knowledge and industry experience to then put together a thesis that will be my North Star, your guiding light. So no matter all the noise and all of the things that you see, uh, you'll be able to stay focused and really disciplined in terms of how you're uh, deploying your money. Because as an angel, you might have a lot of money or you might have a little. And so the way that you really want to do it is by diversifying uh, your risk and portfolio, but in areas that you believe in. All right. There's also a rumor going around one of the... Uh main angel investors, Jason Calacanis, has not come on the show because he's a little nervous to go against you, Mac. That's a, that's a rumor going around town. Yeah. That's, that's it. I, 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 I am, a whole I, about to say, I am a contractor hmm, I don't know. for Inside.com, Jason's company. Yes. He helps sign my checks. Do not get me in trouble with the boss man. <laughs> exactly. Don't do it. New innovative technologies continue to ignite entrepreneurs' creativity. For our final question, give us your best startup idea. What's your best startup idea, Cheryl? I'm very bullish on this next generation around how they take taboo subjects um, and make them funny and make them relatable. So like whether it's sex tech or whether it's deaf tech, which by the way, I'm both very focused on femtech and silver tech. So those are really in my um, wheelhouse. But basically, I would love to see a consumer product that makes deaf fun <laughs> in terms of making sure that people have wills, understanding where their passwords are going to, um, making sure that there's some sort of uh, just next steps for when they die. Like how do they want to be cremated? All of these things that people definitely need to think about because the hunt, like it's a certainty that all of us 100% will die. So the way to make that fun and relatable and make it preventative so that in the future, your loved ones will not be fighting over different things or that they know exactly what to do and making that grieving process just a little bit better. So if you are building anything around that um, and you, you think that um, you know it's something that's relatable and could be a unicorn, please let me know. I'm watching out for that. All right, check out Miss You Graham. A watcher of the show has a tech, death tech company. Uh, Mac, what is the startup? that you are gonna invent or you're gonna make, you're gonna blow up out of the sky. You know what? I need a mechanical hairstylist. I have dreadlocks, they take forever to get done. I gotta schedule these appointments. I have a busy schedule. I just need a chair I can sit in at home and get my hair done and convenient just while I'm chilling and not have to worry about all the rigmarole of going to the shop to get my hair done. I can't tell you. Anybody ever watch the show Atlanta? You know, they got the episode with the barber. It's the same thing with stylists. I, I, the story I could tell you about the last stylist I had to go pick up from the, the train station, but she was at the wrong train station. So I had to go back the other way 30 minutes later. I, yes, I need something to just get my hair done. It sounds very dangerous, but all right, we'll go with that. That sounds good. All right. Well, today's winner, without fail, Mac. Welcome back to the winner circle. You you made it, Cheryl. Congratulations. Look at that. There we go. Yes. Nice. Yes. Finally, yes. gets yes. the belt. Yes. Gets the belt. Yes. I'm sorry, Cheryl. You I know what? That. I'm not even mad. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. The final word. I wasn't prepared. You know, I've been on this losing streak, so I didn't have a speech ready to go. I want to say, I want to shout out to all the people who have been very supportive to me starting Rare Breed. Thank you, David, for being for being an LP. You and Alpaca have been amazing. Cheryl, we're friends at this point. I love you being part of the Republic family. I reached out to you on Twitter. And you, you just, the same day it was I was there. And Jenny, like, me and you, we just like soulmates or something. Like, we just on, on it for everything. So like, you know, we got to find some time to hang out. I don't know if my friends are as cool as yours. You know, I done heard some of your stories of hanging out with some cool folks, but I don't have that. But thank you to the folk here and thank you 
to you and to Tyler for putting this amazing show together and for being supportive of me and what we do. So I'm going to take this moment to say thank you to everybody. Next time, I'm going to hate on all of y'all. But for now, I'm going to say thank you. Thanks for watching Primetime VC. If you want to be a part of this team, reach out to us. Go to primetimevc.com. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit Tyler up on Twitter. Hit us all up. We're trying to grow this, so hit us up. Appreciate you. See you next week.